Hi and welcome to our channel, a place of inspiration for those who constantly strive to become a better version of themselves. And if you want more content like this, please do subscribe. Today we will talk about a book summary. The name of the book, Your Competent Child Towards a New Paradigm in Parenting and Education by Jasper Jewell. The author introduces parents to an amazing approach in how to raise a child. Every single page happens to be engaging and full of wisdom. Jewel categorizes some of his suggestions to people as difficult, but all of them are meant to help people raise confident and healthy relationship from the start. That is why the reader's comments rate this book as both fabulous and important. The book allows the reader to see multiple probabilities with child raising. Anyone having or planning to have a child will learn a lot more after reading this book. The readers will be able to put themselves in other parents' shoes just by seeing themselves in Jewel's numerous examples. This is a first step which would help them in learning how to move on from there. By writing in a highly eloquent fashion, Jewel helps the readers redefine how to look at their behavior and relationship with their children and vice versa. But the author is also not naive. He is aware that the science of child raising is a delicate and an ever-challenging process. However, the purpose of his work is to give you a glimpse into how children perceive education. By the end of the book, one will necessarily start questioning one's own attitude towards the matter and wonder how come one hasn't been taught such information way before. Throughout the book, Jewel offers routine wise skills and pairs them with a new perspective and this alone would make it apparent why this book is advised to be on the shelf of all parents all around the world. Even if one does not agree with the book, it is still an interesting read due to its witty and playful language. Now, the book claims that one thing is for sure. The parents are the sole authority figures who will either grant permission or refuse children's request. In both cases, no one can question the parents' right but they should decide based on what the child is thinking too. This is what Jewel says himself, quote, It is good and necessary that parents exercise this type of power. But this power must be exercised within the context of respecting children's self-esteem and personal responsibility. This means that families need to negotiate and discuss issues before decisions are made. End of quote. On the other hand, the book puts children at the center. The author argues that they must be heard and recognized as competent. Parents, he says, should think about becoming valuable to their children as much as they value their child. Just like children's behavior sometimes makes parents feel less valuable, parents may also make children feel less valuable too. The issue is that before a particular conflict, None of the two parties would be able to convert their genuine feelings into a kind or loving behavior or their sound intentions into a prolific synergy. The situation cannot be inverted by immediate action. The only option is that both parties open themselves toward each other. The major responsibility lies with the parents who have to decode their automatic and potentially inappropriate feedback. Jewel puts it perfectly by saying that Quote, Learning to change our perception is difficult and takes time, but there is nothing wrong with taking our time as long as we do not persist with the illusion that the fault lies with our children. End of quote. In the context of parental violence that a child endures, the author talks about four basic traumas that a child will most likely go through. These are either emotional, mental, existential or physical. Parents should alleviate the effects by calming down, accepting their responsibility emotionally and verbally, giving their child an opportunity to be alone and learn how to cope with his or her reactions, hence establishing the contact by saying, I'm sorry for raising my voice. In conclusion, the author frequently uses a compare and contrast method by emphasizing different situations under the heading old and new. He does not mean to criticize the old, rather he wants to identify solid possibilities for performance. This is why he says, 
we as parents only need to see what in fact we do see. Many good books have been published that guide couples about the science of parenting, but if one has to choose a single book, you should choose this one. Others may be well-intentional, insightful, and often helpful, but this one seems to comprise all of that and has a unique place as a result. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video.